Okay, welcome to video four for uh, SPL's uh, Pro Castle Defence and Home Security information, Friday, the 17th of April. The last and final video of today. There is more to come. Um, here we go. Part four, video four of four home defence. And this is not answering the door and answering the door safely. So uh, there's two different scenarios within all of this. There are nine points that we have for consideration. We call these safety tips, answering the portcullis, uh, castle door in effect. And our few rules of thumb that we have, um, one of them there, as you've heard it mentioned in a few other videos and the chats that we have, it's always better to be safe than sorry. <clears throat> which is why improving your home defense is completely necessary in these given uh, host, hostile and uncertain times. So please continue to read on to find out some castle safety tips for answering the door. And we're going to read them to you now as this publication is what we're promoting in the area of home defense. So we, we would inform that it is not best to open the front door to unexpected um, cold callers, agents, etc. If you're not expecting the door to be, you know, um, knocked, then um, when you should inform all the family of this as well, all little ones, minors, assets, uh, as we are hauling ass ets at this moment in time, then uh, inform all the family members of your rules, um, door safety policies um, for your, you know, safety. Sometimes it is hard to be cautious, and remain polite when answering the front door and many of us find it difficult to put safety first without feeling like we're we're being rude in some way but uh, bless us is all we'll say on that thank you but that stopped safety is paramount not manners and etiquette um as much as lovely as they are we we, we would like to use them but uh, they're not the, the most uh, paramount area safety is so nowadays we can't be too trusting because not all bad guys <laughs> not all bad guys actually break into our homes at night when we're asleep there are many times that they simply knock on our door and they are pretending to be someone else and mask their fraudulent and often evil intentions as crimes committed against the elderly vulnerable and single mothers are on the up we see and are far too frequent for our liking uh, including the less abled these are disgusting behaviors and they must be stopped by any and all lawful means that we have, you know, to us available necessary. We warn that if these you know, advice guidelines, rules, uh, I know what we say about lines and guidelines, but these are just informative points that if they're not followed, then we see and foresee an increased real and present danger to the, effort, to the ever present essence of life and peace. So before, one considers attending or even to open the door, we would uh, like you to consider keeping this uh, Castle Home Defence Safety Tip publication document in mind. Um, print it and have it with you would be great as well. Um, by the door, let the family know where it is, get them familiar with, with what we're saying here and be careful in the future whom you open the door to and indeed let into your home as agents will on collection purposes um, argue and I've got a video on my channel where this has happened on Indiglo where he argued peaceful entry was obtained because an elderly gentleman opened the door and um, he gained access through shoulder foot um, non peaceful entry so we're aware and we have proof that this happens on a daily basis and we are um, trying to stop that um, so be careful on that front and we want you to place notices and the things that we've discussed previous videos um, borderlines um, and no admittance, private property, trespass, visitors seen strictly by appointment that we have there and we've put on the other videos and we're going to have for download also of this one, the private property notice of removal of implied rights of access. So we have two ready to go alongside this document and um, yeah, we would uh, argue um, it might be better to uh, place these by your front door in form via notices, trading standard stickers and etc. CCTV recording, etc. There, inform them, you know, by your front door in the window, and um, and, and, and that would uh, make us very happy, wouldn't it, Kev? <laughs> it would indeed. Print print this stuff off. This should be available. 
pass it around the family, let them read it all too, if that is your wish. Okay, so <clears throat> number one, think before answering the door. Before you answer the door, think if you're expecting anybody, anyone, whether or not you are, ask the visitor to identify himself, herself, themselves. Do not assume their gender. <laughs> Do not open the door immediately without asking them first who they are particularly if you're home alone or if one is considered vulnerable as listed on the previous page. So anybody that's maybe ill, elderly, lots of different reasons, might be a mental health condition, might just be a health condition, but consider those things. And if possible, if you have got somebody that would be uh, classed as vulnerable, then I would suggest you maybe also speak to your council about getting that noted somewhere. I know this isn't all to do with councils, but if you note it with your local authority, please be aware there is a vulnerable person at this address. Just something you can do. But then you always refer said agent at door to, well, Yes, there is somebody vulnerable here. If you'd like to speak to the local authority, here's the department, phone them, they'll confirm it. Thank you. A peephole, don't forget, they're very handy, not always practicable in everybody's situation, but if you can get one fitted, they're very simple, very cheap, and obviously you can see what's going on and decide whether you're gonna bother looking at answering the door or not. So don't forget the peephole. When you hear someone knocking on your door, it's always best to check the peephole first before opening it. If you can't get a glimpse of the agent, caller, visitor knocking, you can use a closed window to take a peek. You'll be able to determine if it's a family member or a friend, or it, or it can also, or you can also, number three, use your phone. When someone is looking for a particular family member, it would be best to take a picture of the visitor and send it to whoever needs to confirm. You can also just call them and ask if they're expecting a visitor and if they know who the person is. Another handy tip and always worth a, a, an investment for relatively small amount of money, chain lock. Install one, install a chain lock. Being able to crack the door open without unchaining your lock is a great security feature. This is also useful if you need to grab something small from someone without the need to unlock the door. So if somebody wants to pass you some paperwork, you can get to put the letterbox, or they're passing you a card so that you can check they are who they say they were. You can do that through the, the limited space that uh, a chain lock would allow. Um, this is also useful if you need to grab something small from someone without the need to unlock the door. Again, most vulnerable homes should check the integrity of these and add as applicable if not fitted. One good rule of thumb is prevention is better than cure. Number five, make a phone call. Call whoever your visitor says they represent to ensure they did send someone out to your home. If it is a repair guy, look for the number of their office in the phone book or search the internet yourself. Do not, I repeat, do not just simply call the number the visitor gave you. As previously said, quite often these days, there's somebody sat down the road in a car. Uh, if they give you a mobile number to call, I would be really suspicious. It should be a landline number if it's an office. So just something there for you. That's it. Okay, Off to David. That's a, I'll take over. Have I unmuted now? I did try and speak to you earlier and I was on mute, but uh, <laughs> we'll move on. Uh, we realize for agents, bailiffs, debt collectors, etc., sheriffs, we, we will go deeper into the verbatim scenarios there. Um, this is not the video for that. We've kept it at the beginning level. This is your uh, foundation level 
area of uh, education and courses that we've uh, promised you in you know we've, we've somewhat delivered this already in various videos hangouts uh, and uh, testimonies um, via YouTube Facebook across the three to, to, to four to five years now that we've, we, we've been in, actively doing this so for those that are struggling um, later on with <clears throat> more technicalities we will bring that to you um, in due course all right in, in, when we have the time we'll this is just the beginning and to say hello to the Facebook realm watch parties um, YouTube and then we will progress as soon as fast as we can basically so number six uh, keep home defense right this is uh, this is particular now to states and countries continents and constitutions we've had a little private chat and we're confident in what we're saying here we did have the right to bear arms as uh, Britons um, English etc some time ago the right to bear arms is uh, is not so much uh, applicable now for uh, Britain again we'll go deeper onto the constitutional changes and the rights too and what our rights are um, legally and privately etc so when I say this we say this keep home defense weapons handy we are not promoting any violence we are peaceful um, you know loving sentient non vexatious non violent and um, if something happens it'd be better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it that can come in the form of sprays liquids we're not talking knives we're not talking um, you know big old scary weapons but in America we know that they have the right to bear arms and they can, in an isolated area, we'll go Texas, Arizona, and um, think of the horror films that you've seen and look at the defense they have there. I'm not saying take law from Hollywood. What I'm saying is look at America's and how they defend and their rights. Uh, England, Anglo, not UK, but Britain is somewhat different. We'll go into that later. So you are allowed to have a licensed weapon in some continents, and that is a fact. So no matter what you think you hear from us, you would need to come, we'll get this, listen, keep emergency weapons around just in case something bad happens. Place them close <clears throat> to you or someplace easy to reach, especially for at night times or night visitors, bedrooms, doorways, access points, in places where you wouldn't normally think to keep them, um, just in case. Um, keep them, you know, uh, in the uh, secure places, that only you can find them. We have assets, uh, blood, young stars around. They can't be getting hold of them. Guns have to follow rules, licenses, cabinets, etc., depending on your constitutional rights there. So it's a last resort, having a weapon nearby, but it can often, we've found, spell the difference between life and death. Um, we hope it doesn't come to that, but this is the, the stickier end and the, the worst end of the scenario. We hope for the best and we prepare for the worst the rule of thumb there um, and with that said <clears throat> number seven is listen to your gut feeling if you feel or think something is wrong there's probably something wrong we find go with your gut do not ignore your um, gut feelings because it possibly can save your life it is an unspoken part of situational awareness okay do not be afraid to reschedule so if you are suffering with um, an affliction or you are uh, suffering, allow, endure, if you are afflicted with any kind of uh, issue and um, you know uh, it might not be convenient or practical or the right time and you are um, anxious and um, an anxiety is a key role here, um, depression, um, many have this. So uh, on, on these occasions, you might not want to be dealing with them and you may need to, through the councils and boroughs and ways that we've said, arrange um, access so you have a notice and you are prepared and we find that that goes a lot better for various reasons so on any occasion that one cannot verify a visitor's identity um, and this is a visitor collection agents and sheriffs and um, collection uh, what well, dca sheriffs and um, bailiffs and all around the world different names they have id <laughs> warrant cards paperwork court appointed paperwork you know we've, we've gone through this extensively so if they are there for legal collection court fines <coughs> levy etc then they would be there with the correct paperwork backup warrants cards all of that um, later down the line okay so hold fire on that one you should be able to verify any visitors identity particular those that are in that field of finance legal um, enforcement levies 
and you can reschedule an appointment on a later date. These, what we've given you, will help you do that and they will notice them straight away. Okay, so we'll go deeper into this, into the partisan chats and they will give you the time to check on visitors and ensure that you know who they are before allowing them inside the home, property, etc. cetera. Um, you know, we'll, we'll uh, go deeper on this and expand on it later. So um, thank you. Um, number nine in our countdown, mm. not in any uh, order of preference particularly, but educate to keep the family safe. Educate every member of your household on these practices to keep the whole family safe. Stay cautious, teach your family to do the same. Knowing the best safety practices when someone knocks on your door can help you have a more secure and happy home. Home defense is more than just having a weapon or if USA or international, possibly if you're in those jurisdictions, then a licensed firearm may be with you, should you be in that position. Uh, please research and confirm your rights as per your country's constitution and learn more about home burglaries and defence. Nowadays, we can't always be so trusting. Very true, unfortunately. We no longer have the luxury of simply believing a stranger's word without questioning first. <clears throat> With home invasions happening all over, you have to be extra sure before letting a visitor in. Taking these steps to ensure your safety is necessary, especially if you are home alone. Precaution is key when approaching a visitor at your door. Stay safe. Remember, you are in control. Don't answer the door. Don't answer the door. Very simple. Um, and just on that, if anybody's had and listened to these and has got any other uh, home defence tips or any stories you might have of, of how you've dealt with these slithering <laughs> subjects, <laughs> when they attend your promise, we'd love to hear from you. Um, you can drop in your, you know, your two pence worth in the comments on SPLS Pro, or you can drop us uh, an email at contact at SPLS Pro. That would be awfully kind of you. Thank you. Well, thank you, brother. Yes, that would be contact at SPLSPRO.com. And uh, we say this in light of the times um, at present, we don't know what is happening um, with emergency congressional and parliamentary suppositions to uh, public codes and codified secular law. So we, uh, we recognize the rights of man, man. And um, if you've been with us a while and you know Kevin and David and the SPLs and um, how many, uh, you know, video, countless video casts we've done um, previously through the years and you will be au fait with this and you'll be quite nonchalant with how this, uh, how we roll on a private uh, capacity, status and standing, assumption and presumption. Um, we need to articulate our rights and express them. And um, these are the ways in which we do that and how we do that, the language. Um, and it, as Kev has pointed out there, we can no longer have that luxury of trust. Trust is failing and has crumbled. And we're here to bring it back. We're here to, to, uh, to use these maxims of um, you know, biblical number one, and then we go to equity number two, um, the KJV, and so forth, and uh, the biblical mosaics, and then we can go to Roman, public, secular, Westminster, international covenants, political, human rights, and we're working down a long tree of of, uh, of articulated the uh, the correct ways, and and we're not telling you anything here again. There is no legal advice. This is what we're doing. Um, out of man's desperation comes our innovation. So we assume that most of you are au fait with this and knowledgeable. If you're not, then that's why we're here and we have a, a, a cold calling template letter that we're going to upload in addition with these videos and documents. And we're going to be uh, heading into safety of estates, biological estate. This estate here is number one, your queen, 
your your wife, your partner, your common law, wife, etc., your blood, your young stars, star seeds, assets. When we say this is play on American English, we're hauling ass is what they say in America. It's time to haul ass. Well, it's time to haul <laughs> assets. And uh, yeah, we're going to add that bit there. And uh, Kev, have we got anything else we've missed or we need to read, uh, you know, uh, well, as I say, uh, as we move on, people, this is very basic. This is this is basics. This is not, you know, an exhaustive. That's it. That's everything you need to do. This is purely the basics of protecting yourself and being wary and how to deal with these people. As Dave said, there's a template letter which you can use to send to the companies uh, if they've turned up on your doorstep unannounced to get them to stop. Um, there's also template letter for DCAs, um, which I think is up on the dot com, but that will be included with these for um, the same purposes. If they've written to you saying you owe us X, Y, Z, there's a good template letter to send to them under GDPR DPA, uh, which sets out what you require from them. They won't be able to provide it. More often than not, you might not hear from them again you might get a new one trying you, which you'd then do the same letter to. But yes, we have ways and means of dealing with these situations and they are all available to you people. Thank you. Brilliant. This has been rather fun. It's now uh, about a quarter to four by my alleged timepiece. We've spent a few hours on this. I've spent all <laughs> yesterday um, putting on software and uh, working out how best to do this. Zoom was not the desired way to do this but we thank the platform for allowing us to simply do these and record them and manage them we are going to get uh, more powerful uh, processors and desktops laptops at the this end and we will uh, be able to incorporate um, a lot better presentations and have guests on and do this um, as google the hangouts and the realms changing again rights access and um, broadcasting and etc so we are managing the best we can here and um, i I'm disappointed that my broadcasting software that I've spent three days learning to use and installing and configuring and I went to run, you'll see the tests on the Facebook uh, broadcast group we've done under YouTube for Indie Glow. Um, they are there and it works, but my, my final test was um, non-successful non -successful due to um, bandwidth, um, internet, frames per second um all these kind of technicalities uh, the process is getting hot and it is unable to give a, a basic 5 720 um, p picture um and do what it needs to do so um yeah this has achieved what we needed to do they're recorded privately and we intend them to be on as watch parties and um, to introduce us to the family um, i'm aware that others have started to give away some um some some advice and information and um, I'm not going to mention any names, but I'm going to contact those and see if we can consolidate all of this into specialized forums on the Facebook, um, ASPLSPro.com and, and the, the uh, private domain we have, and then on YouTube as well. So on the three areas that we are frequenting primarily, we will see if we can put links in to others and you can then go around and we will collate all the ones in the realm that have something to offer that we have validated, we have checked, we respect, we have worked with, not just... Uh, Big Barry's brother from wherever feeding out misinformation. We will give you validated, trusted, um, you know, uh, areas of, of where we've been and what we've found to be correct, valid, lawful, um, biblical, etc. And it has worked before, established, um, trusted, vetted. Um, Kev, anything else? No, I think you've you've covered it all there. As I say, there's, I'm sure there's. Hopefully there'll be some discussion when these are put out and, and, and anything that needs to be clarified. We shall do our utmost to do exactly that, people. If you want to leave Thank you. Respect. <laughs> Thank you all. And um, I'm looking forward to the previews when we uh, do this. I don't know when that is. We've got the videos done. We've got to go live and do them <laughs> again now, Kev. <laughs> all right. It's all good. Thank you. Bless us. We love it. And yeah, we'll see you soon, yeah? Yeah, big love to everybody. Thanks for, if you get to looking at these. Thanks for your time. Hope they've been helpful. You know where we are. Big love to you all. Yeah. Do one of them. I can do one of them. <laughs>
Ciao for now. Much love. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>